All right, good evening, guys. Kenneth Tortoise Capital, nightly strategy podcast for February 1st, 2023. Uh, for subscribers and anybody within the sound of my voice, uh, over at patreon.com backslash Ken Long, our uh, homepage there, uh, you'll see a link to allow you to sign up for the Creativity 101 course. Uh, it's free. This is the course that I teach a uh, thousand army officers a year at the command and general staff college uh, you can get that at no cost to you lifetime access to the materials just by way of saying thanks for support and the, looking forward to a great year ahead you can sign up for it directly at that link you, the link is clickable on patreon or you can just type that in um, I want to talk for a moment about the Creativity 202 course, which is getting ready to start. So Creativity 101, we proved in the uh, research project we just completed for the Army that's going to get written up in Harvard Business Review, that that course has a statistically significant effect on creativity. That's Creativity 101. Same project. Uh, we also tested that against Creativity 202, and that was much better. This is the one that uses the Fletcher treatment. Uh, treatment. So I think of uh, Creativity 101 as kindergarten and foundational. It won't do you any harm. But Creativity 202 is the real secret sauce, and that's what Fortune 50 companies are lining up to get. Um, pretty good stuff. The New York Times is going to come and uh, interview me and some of the other researchers on that one, so that should be kind of fun. I just got to get that cleared through the Public Affairs Office. Um, but that looks like it's going to happen. Uh, when we talk about the Creativity 202 course, um, this is the list of lessons that are inside that course. And I should point out that um, it's a 30-week it's a course with live coaching by me and there will be some assistant instructors from the last uh, two cohorts that went through it they liked it so much they agreed to stay on and to uh, to assist so this is what's in the course in the introduction you get a lot of background stuff like um, uh, the plan for the course uh, a comparison to critical thinking to understand why they're different but important together uh, so a mission, definition, some introduction, and a summary. Uh, there was one really good session that we did. We talked about the essential idea that is so good that may be worth the price of the course. Uh, some thought experiments about when is good enough good enough. Uh, we created a 70-point professional skills self-assessment tool for traders as part of this course. And so what was really neat was that the, I was taking the course while also facilitating the course, and we generated a ton of uh, great new artifacts and insights. Uh, here's a sample coaching session and an introduction to hybrid trading that emerged from the course. Along the way, we updated our glossary, version 4.0, and then a connection to a very good book by George Leonard called Mastery. Three of the students have already completed, now we just finished on Sunday, but three of the students have uh, completed their works in progress, the f their final project, which was a summary of their 30-week experience. And those are really master classes in adult learning, in public, with skin in the game, for accountability. Kyun, Tom Hardison, and Chun Long just did masterful jobs. And... Uh, even if you don't take the course, you should listen to the to the audio uh, for inspiration. So then the book or then the course has uh, a number of sections. Section one is the introduction that talks about the idea that if you want more creativity, you can get it because it's connected to natural processes in our brain. Section two uh, starts teaching you how to start unlocking that creativity which we already have um, the best way to think of that is is that we're born creative and then we are educated out of it 
uh, because of social reasons. So that's what you get in section two, how to begin unlocking that creativity you already have. In section three, we're looking for techniques that allow us then to amplify that natural creativity. And in section four, those lessons are designed to how to adopt new personas that allow you to unleash creativity because you're adopting a new role or role playing. Uh, in advanced creativity, section five, we're looking for more complex and collaborative uh, techniques for advanced creativity. Section six, we, we do a recap of 10 myths of creativity and why those can hold you back if you believe in them. But we look at the science behind debunking those myths. Uh, in the conclusions, we're basically looking at the the, the final, the final wrap-up. Now, the other thing that's really powerful about this course is that the uh, participants in the U.S., we had two cohorts. We had the U.S. Uh, and Australia, and then we had a bunch of guys in the Eurozone, plus a few from Canada that preferred the Sunday morning meeting rather than the Monday evening meeting. And we did weekly check-ins. So, so this is a case where anywhere from five to ten individuals who had taken that week's lesson, done the work, and brought with them the most powerful moment from that week's of reflection, then we shared those stories together on camera and did some group session coaching. Each one of these is anywhere from 90 minutes uh, to two and a half hours. And you can see that th there's a session for each one of those uh, 30 lessons. And I just realized we had like 64 recordings. So that's well over 100 hours of additional live collaborative meetings. And the, uh, the insights that we had were really kind of astonishing. In addition, along the way, uh, we were generating new artifacts and new insights and producing products. And this is just 32 uh, of the best things that we develop, including we actually created the sniper system during the course, and you can actually see the foundational ideas and the early design thinking that went into the creation of what is now our robust, uh, our robust uh, sniper course. So that's the one you see me briefing every night. Well, this is where it was born inside the creativity. Yeah, uh, Mike asked me, does each section contain reading assignments or is it all lecture? Each one of those 30 lessons consists of the following. You have a, uh, a less than one page short reading from uh, Angus Fletcher, who is the uh, head of Ohio State University's uh, uh, think tank on story science called Project Narrative. It's the leading creativity think tank in the world for, for the use of stories and narrative. So he produces a one page reading that is set in a historical context. And then he will have one or two uh, experiential learning exercises, what we call uh, practical exercises or PEs. Uh, and that's where you, uh, you try something, you write about it, you explore it in your mind space. So that's a practical exercise. In addition, so that's the, that's the Fletcher portion. And then what I've done is I've designed a trader's exercise that builds on uh, the main idea from Fletcher's work. And so you get a trader's exercise and one or two practical uh, exercises. And then what we do is uh, all the people who are in your cohort, or who in this case were in those cohorts, uh, come together and they bring a uh, about a three to five minute summary of the biggest insight that they personally had that week as a result of doing those two exercises. And then we share that around in a discussion circle using true storytelling principles in which we are non-judgmental, uh, non-advisory. We're just engaged in deep listening to witness uh, the, the true stories that people are telling. And that builds a sense of trust and confidence and collaboration in that circle. And then after we tell our stories, then we kick it around and we uh, discuss some follow-ons and insights. And from that, uh, we pick a focus word 
that of all the things that uh, uh, we listen to, we pick a focus word that we carry forward into the next week, and then that becomes a, a piece of focused meditative reflection. So each, uh, each one of these lessons, then, the 30 lessons, has the Fletcher material, it has my material, it has the uh, 90 minute to two and a half hour recorded uh, content of our uh, of our live coaching group coaching sessions, um, and uh, and then it has all of these extra artifacts and additional materials that came out as a as a consequence of um, uh, the ideas that that were generated inside there, and you get lifetime access to this. Uh, whether you take the home study course, uh, which is just you, you get to access the material, or if you take the live cohort, uh, which is where you're gonna you would be one of these uh, the next cohort that goes through and engages in live coaching with me. Um, so, uh, and then as future iterations of this roll out, it just, we keep adding we will keep adding to the course, so it's only gonna just keep getting better. So yeah, the short answer to your question is each section contains uh, a short reading, an experiential learning exercise, and what I would consider a semi-lecture or testimony in the form of um, uh, video recordings, plus a lot of downloadable uh, interviews. Um, so that's, that's a, just a quick look at the, um, uh, at the creativity course. Just as a you know, as a bonus, there's a, um, this one, interlude number 12. I just include, I did a, a two-hour session with the super traders from the Tharp Institute uh, where I went through uh, a number of their trading strategies in the form of live coaching, so I just included that in there anyway. Um, and then some testimony from, like, Joe Greco, who talks about the impact that the live coaching sessions have had on his life as he's completely revised his business and uh, and established himself um, in the business community in Florida and Georgia. So uh, some pretty transformational um, uh, ideas. Uh, this one I really like. This is the an interlude with Joe and Tom and Ernie. So so Joe and Tom had formed a two man accountability group. Uh, and it, have been working for well over a year together on a weekly basis to integrate their lessons. And Ernie uh, had an assignment from the creativity course to interview those two guys and find out what it was like to have an accountability partner and to go through that. And the interview itself will just knock your socks off with the, the power of the insights and what can happen when you operate on the basis of um, safety, trust, truth it always leads to opportunity and that's really why the army has really embraced um, this uh, this course and this approach to creativity as well because they realize the power of the um, uh, of unleashing people's creativity in, in a world that is adaptive and dynamic and dangerous your best resource for long-term success and survival is to unleash your creativity routinely, and that's what this course really does. So I wanted to just share that share that idea with you. Okay, so that's the link. Um, we have uh, a couple ways to take it. Uh, we can you can take it as an individual self-paced, just a home study course where you have access to all that material that I just showed you. Uh, I'm offering it to subscribers for a thousand bucks. It's it's worth ten times that much. That's that's the good version of it. Uh, the better version uh, is if you were to join uh, the next cohort and what you would have access to is not only the home study course and all those resources, but the chance to engage in live collaboration with a new group of students, my last cohort, and then myself to do live coaching. Uh, and we're offering that for 2000 bucks to subscribers. It's 3000 if you are uh, from the world, but uh, subscribers get a, get a boost. Uh, in the future, I'll be doing the best one in which I will be doing individual coaching with one-on-one um, uh, -on -one coaching with um, uh, with members. Uh, that one is uh, uh, contact me for if you're interested in that. That that one comes at a premium because you get focused uh, personal attention. Uh, so the next cohort starts 
on uh, 12 February, and it's a 30-week course, and I'm not going to run multiples of those. Uh, so once I get started in a cohort, I'm staying with them for 30 weeks. And, uh, I mean, you can always take the, the home study course, but to get on board with the cohort, uh, time is of the essence. Uh, all right, so that's that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and get back to our regularly scheduled program. We're going to start with the um, uh, with the swing portfolio. Uh, so this was Alcoa. You will recall that yesterday uh, we had a really strong intraday trade, and it worked so well that we elected to keep 20% as a swing uh, with. Uh, with our entry here and using a standard risk box at the belly of the dragon. Uh, that one, uh, you know, it closed well yesterday and today with the Fed announcement, this thing is deeply in the money. This is about one, two, three. That one's about 5R on two days uh, using that reference as our, as our 1R. So that one paid off really well. This is at a key turning point now. Uh, this was the last place that it failed, but with the Fed announcement, I think there's a good chance to get another leg up, and it wouldn't be surprised to see it get all the way over to the previous support. So 56 is in order, and what I'll be doing is uh, raising my stop from here up into here. Now, during the day when I saw that Fed announcement, I went ahead and locked in that much, but I'll be adjusting that, and then tomorrow I'll try to get that stop higher. I'll be looking to add another position if it keeps going uh, as a turbo. So Alcoa is probably my number one priority for trading tomorrow. So this is the case where this is hybrid trading and essentially what we had uh, was an intraday trade here that went so well that the that the day trade became a swing trade and then that swing trade allowed us to get a turbo it became a, a better day trade, and then tomorrow we're looking to get another day trade using the the money that we've made here uh, to fund the intraday move. So this is uh, that's a nice example of uh, hybrid trading. Uh, in Cliff, uh, we were stocking that one. Our last trade was this one, um, and then today on the breakout of the PSR box and the market really doing well, we just went ahead held our nose and started a swing from here. Standard risk box. This thing is about 2R in hand. Uh, and I'm, again, much like Alcoa, I'm looking for all the metals to continue. And it's it's cleared a really important uh, resistance level. And the 30-day high is in, is in play. So I'm liking that possibility there. Uh, Chevron was a Godzilla that we started uh, yesterday. Um, and... Uh, that one monkeyed around a little bit. Today it sold off and then closed fairly well. So we're about back to break even. Uh, it was testing our, our swing low here. The uh, um, We were using the standard risk from the first successful trade. Uh, and so it, it tested it but didn't fail. So we're kind of at break even. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I'll, I'm just going to keep that stop in place until it... Uh, I'd like to see it break above the 10-day high before... Uh, before I move my stop from here and lock anything in. Okay, so that one's still a work in progress, still cooking. Uh, Devon Energy, uh, we had uh, closed a successful short here, uh, missed the collapsing dragon today, but on the rebound, I elected to uh, initiate the swing at the PSAR flip like an SSC with a standard risk. And it's closed right about here. And it has to get above, say, 63 uh, before I become interested in raising my stop. And I would look maybe to add a second position, m maybe that early. We'll see how it goes. Um, but otherwise, I'll just let that go as a single position until 66. But if, the, if energy really performs well, I could be tempted to add a second position around here. Uh, emerging markets was a uh, a five five one W. You heard me brief that yesterday. Um, you know, it's emerging markets have been great. Had a harsh sell off yesterday. Was a morning hook and closed well. 
and it was setting up for a 551W swing trade at the close. So I went ahead and bought it uh, on the 30-minute chart uh, and used a tight stop. Uh, this thing uh, tested a little bit today, but we're about one, two, three, four, almost 5R in hand and closing well. And tomorrow, I would not be surprised to see it come up and test this next resistance area. So uh, intraday, we moved our stop to here. Uh, and then tomorrow, so I'm giving it a little bit of wiggle room. And then if it breaks out and keeps going, I'll raise that stop and look to add a second position up here. So I'm really pleased with emerging markets. That looks like a buy on dip opportunity. Uh, Ethereum, just stalking, had a nice uh, last couple hours, but not enough to get me in. Uh, this is uh, Mexico. We had uh, closed a nice win. Then we got short here. Today we closed that for a scratch and then sim then added a stop and reverse. And that thing has got about, uh, about 2R in hand and closing well. Uh, that's one I, I can add right away because it has already cleared that previous resistance level. So at the first sign of continued strength, EWW, I will add to it. I will start it on the three minutes uh, as an intraday turbo trade, and then I'll be looking to uh, keep a piece of that to add to the swing trade, which is already in place. So I'm liking that one. Uh, Brazil, uh, we were short. Uh, yeah, we were short here. That one failed, so we took the one-hour loss. That was a stop and reverse. Today we got tricked on that one and took a half an hour loss. It then continued to sell off harshly all day. I missed the stop and reverse, uh, but then that really closed well, and I decided because of the strength in Mexico uh, that this still had an opportunity. So I reversed again, and uh, I'm looking for a... Um, a uh, a continuation tomorrow. That's just me being stubborn with a symbol that I like to trade. It's a great intraday trader. I'm trying to make it a swing. Uh, this was international paper. We looked at this uh, yesterday uh, because of this nice move. I almost bought here, didn't, and I'm now regretting that. Uh, or two days ago, I, then it had the nice big move yesterday. Morning hook, and then took off on the. Uh, on the Fed announcement today. So I took that as a speculative one because the industrials all started performing really, really well after the Fed announcement. So we're about flat on that one right now. Um, but I would be looking to add another position as soon as 42 if it can get out above this, above that resistance. So that was a, a trade on a reaction to the Fed. Um, U.S. real estate, uh, two days ago we initiated this one here with a tight stop. It tested closely, but didn't kick us out. And we're about one, two, three, four R in hand uh, and no resistance in sight. So this one has a chance to really go uh, at the first sign of strength tomorrow. I'll add a second swing position as the alternative to equities and tech. Uh, McDonald's, uh, we initiated today. Um, no, I'm sorry, we initiated that yesterday. Uh, it tested and is now back to about break even. Uh, so I'm just going to let it grow. It has some work to do to to close this gap. I think there's a good chance that it closes the gap tomorrow. They had a great earnings announcement. And uh, with the favorable reaction of the broad market today, I could see this easily moving up into the previous resistance here. So, So I like that as an opportunity. Second position, I wouldn't think about putting on until it breaks above this 10-day uh, and 30-day high. But I'm cautiously optimistic on McDonald's. Uh, marijuana, yesterday, you'll recall, we had the uh, Z3 breakout and this amazing run-up, and then we took the gift. Uh, today, mm -hmm. it sold off mm -hmm. and then started to retrace again. So on that's almost like an intraday cut of two on the 30. So we re-entered with that as our risk, and it's about one, two, three. It, it, at one point it was up three. It ended up closing back around here. So I'm comfortable with that. I'd like to, as soon as it starts taking off, 
I'll look to raise the stop. In fact, I'll raise that stop to no lose plus dinner for two. No. Sorry about that. Uh, next up, clean energy. Uh, we initiated a position on the intraday Kata 2 and the Z3 breakout. There's our standard risk. It closed really well. So we're about plus two on that one. Um, and it's gonna it's testing this previous resistance. So we'll uh, look to see how that works tomorrow. We won't lose money on that trade. Treasuries finally paid us off. You know, last week we'd initiated a, uh, an SSC and then just watched it monkey around. Today it got traction and uh, really closed well. So, you know, here was our risk. So we're about plus 2R on treasuries. Uh, it's got to give get above 108 to be very interesting. I'll look to add a second position above 110. We just bought that as a hedge, but it turned out to be all right. Initiated Tesla today. Uh, that should receive some joy from the tech crowd and the growth that was implied in today's Fed work. So nice entry on the Kata 2 here. Closed well. It's It broke through that resistance, so I have... Uh, Good expectations. That'll be a high payoff or high priority for tomorrow. Finally, U.S. Steel, just like the other metals, all did well. Uh, pushed all the way up above the previous resistance. I'll look to add a second position here, starting with the intraday trade. So I'll be looking at the metals, Tesla, um, real estate, and uh, Mexico tomorrow as highest priorities for the swing portfolio. So uh, pretty good response by the uh, swing portfolio today. All right, let's take a look at the um, sniper trades of the day. So this is a special one. This was a setup because it was a Fed day. And this is normal behavior uh, as you approach the Fed. This is around noon going towards 2 p.m. And you have that very tight channel. Um, it started breaking out from there, so I took a venture. On that. I wanted to be short if it went below the collapsing dragon, so I treated this as a uh, Z3 breakout uh, with a standard risk box right here, looking to front run uh, the breakout from that support level. So that was just a venture. This was in, uh, in fact, this was in Alcoa going short. That did not follow through, so I cashed a half an hour loss, stopped and reversed when it broke through uh, the breakout to the upside. So when that broke out, uh, that's, the, that's the entry to the long side. So this little piece is about minus a half an hour. I'm using the same standard risk box on both of those trades. That thing just worked at plus 2R battle drill, added a position, never tested. Uh, I took, as it started to close out for the end of the day, I, I cashed it at the edge of the uh, dragon, you know, as the dra and it started to roll over. I took it at the edge of the dragon for about one, two, three, four on the first one, and two on the second one, so that's about plus six. And, uh, and then that, that took us into the close for the day. So that was an opportunity trade in the afternoon uh, based on being prepared and knowing that the Fed always gives us some last minute um, volatility that's very tradable. So this is one from the start of the day. Uh, this one is, uh, here's the uh, OR3. Uh, this one rolled over started to collapse the the fall turned to winter so I front run that here with a standard risk box there and then if it breaks below the OR3 uh, I think this thing can really free fall uh, on the other side uh, what I'm looking at is if it if it does break out above this peak uh, I would be looking uh, at a strong move to the upside so this is in a critical state starting to fail um, and uh, I'm ready to go. 
standard exit for about one R win. Stop and reversed with a, uh, an SSC. Uh, one R loss. Stop and reverse on a collapsing dragon. Second position on the second collapsing dragon. Third position uh, on another 2R battle drill, because why not? Exit all at the edge of the dragon. So that's one. So one, two, three, four, five, six on the first one. Three on the second one. One on the third one. So that's about ten. Uh, this was plus one, and that was minus one. So those two scratch. So we're at about plus ten on that one. Check or hold. This is uh, XOP, Oil Exploration, one of the most liquid and volatile ETFs going. Um, this one, I try the, sh the short continuation. I like that one so much that as soon as this rolled over and started to fail, I front run that to the downside with a standard risk box. That just about scratches and then stop and reverse on an SSC. Scratch. I thought hard about a Cauda 2 re-entry. I took the second Cauda 2 re-entry, standard risk box, and then added about three more on a routine exit at the PSAR cross. Check or hold. So that one is the symmetry uh, of XOP. That's the oil and gas exploration. Notice that its failure is fast and that its recovery is a slow grind. That's why the Collapsing Dragon is our favorite pattern, but we're willing to trade this one because you can get paid. My brother snuck a couple trades in for us to look at. So this is Nolan, and uh, he's working on his Cauda 2 challenge. Um, he brought home 1.6 today in spite of mistakes uh, he's you know making a little bit of sawdust in the wood shop here but uh, he's getting paid uh, he notice, notices that it would have been a 5R if he'd had uh, a little more efficiency on execution um, I like the short and the quick exit I like the re short and a quick exit you could actually get this re-entry down here at the PSAR flip, but I like the fact that you didn't let a winning trade go negative. Uh, we could have had the short here, and that would have paid off this, but you at least got this one, and I think you're a little gun shy right there. Normally, we would re-enter there and get paid. Here's the SSC that gets paid. He tries the collapsing drag. That's a good, or a cut of two to the downside. That's a good entry because you have a lower high. It crossed the VWAP. It, it went through the drag and it broke this. And so it's supposed to fail and you would look at adding a second position here when that collapsing dragon fails. But because he didn't, he takes a quick loss and then the stop and reverse and stays with it uh, and stays with it and stays with it and then catches the move. Uh, I don't know if I would take these trades in here because of the proximity to the Fed. Uh, that's where you can take this wide, a wide channel, and then wait for the break. That probably would have got me in, to be honest, and that one as well. Uh, so that was just a, a wild ride in the Fed today in Tesla, uh, but you caught the mover, and uh, that makes it all look pretty good. Uh, Gary with his first uh, trade force here in Devon Energy. Um, I don't want you to call him... Uh, chase trades because I don't want them to have a name because then that um, that gives them some legitimacy. We don't want that. 
So if this is our OR3, that's a good short breakdown. Um, there's no real reason to get out of that unless you, your, your stop is, I think, too tight. But I, if, if you take the exit there, as long as you re-enter here, you should be able to get all of that. And then the re-entry here is very nice. We should be able to get most of that, and that's 4 to 5 R. Uh, this is not a trade. This one is at the PSAR flip. You should be long approximately here. And then I would say use the PSAR box as your risk box, and then you'll get all of this with a single trade. So uh, welcome aboard, and the first one's the hardest one, and it gets better. Uh, this is, let's see, is this my brother? Not sure who this is. Hold on. Label your charts. Yeah, that's my brother. So he's using a three minute on Moon, the Moonshots Innovators. Uh, there's his normal entry, standard exit when that starts rolling over. Uh, Alcoa, he had uh, was able to get a uh, second position. Oops, that's right. Mouse is jumping around here. He gets his standard breakout. This is the two-hour battle drill. When it doesn't follow through, he's all out and gets paid uh, nicely for plus six hundred in his account there. Uh, we just saw that one. Sorry. Uh, here's Intel on a nice breakout today. Their cost-cutting measures by cutting executive salary seems to be working. Had a nice move today. Standard exit. Um, and then finally, uh, his Walmart swing from yesterday. Uh, paid off really nicely uh, intraday. So that paid off and closed well. So that's a combination of core and turbo for in there. So nice work by the traders across the board. Uh, market health checks real quick. This is our SPY on 30 minute. Um, this was the quietude leading up to the Fed and then the breakout in the positive direction, pushing near the 30-day high, a couple more targets to the upside, around 425. Uh, key support, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. Clear markings, and we're definitely in the summertime and looking good heading into tomorrow. Uh, on the daily, you can see that we pushed to a new 10-day high today, broke the previous 10-day high, so that's all good. Here's your edge of the dragon, spine of the dragon, belly of the dragon, and the piece are all our protective stops to keep it from coming back and testing the swing low. Notice the nice progression from winter to spring, and now deeply into summer, and off we go. Uh, and then long term, uh, you can see we're up around the 75 or 80. You know, if you, you, the 150 day high, if you put that at at 100, and the 150 day low here at zero, we're about 80 index points off that low. And here's our 30 day look back, our 10 day look back, our five day look back. So everything. Everything's looking pretty good there. And we cleared that previous hump right there. So cautiously optimistic. Next targets up in here at the previous PSR flip, peak of the Dragon, and then peak of the RL10. That's where you get those 
those markers. And if it gets above the 150-day high at 430, then 470 previous all-time highs in play. Um, it, it fails an awful lot faster than it grinds up. You know, this happened in one one third of the time it fell that whole way and it's taken three time segments to recover most of that so that's why we like the downside the collapsing dragon but we are willing to participate on the way up um, looking at the sectors from a distance uh, i'll just notice that um, you know the s p again our benchmark in the middle of the pack tesla in blue did really really well the most important stock in the world. Uh, our metals all did well. Here's U.S. Steel, Alcoa, and Cliff. So the metals were all good based on the Fed announcement. And then tech was very good today too with Texas Instruments and Intel in the semiconductors and NVIDIA in the semiconductors. So NVIDIA continues to just dominate the tech space. That's a, that's a clear leader going forward. Uh, Devon Energy was the notable energy exception to the rule today. Um, the winning the winning indexes are in yellow here, or the big indexes are in yellow. So there's the S&P, which was up a percent. You had the Qs were the leaders at plus two. Emerging markets and the Russell were up about one and a half. Treasuries were up a percent, and the Dow came in basically flat. This is a shift towards growth on, risk on, and away from the conservative diamonds. So I take that as a positive sign. All right, let's go through the reports real quick and uh, we'll get ready to wrap it up here. All right, dashboard one. Uh, still bullish quiet, that's good, looking pretty strong. We're getting ready to cross the 50-yard line on the 270. Um, we're 4% above the 200-day moving average and starting to get some traction. Uh, we are still neutral in terms of uh, the, uh, the risk Z is not extreme. It's risk on, but it's not abnormally so. So that's a very positive sign. Uh, new core steel, diamonds, um, Cisco looking good on the max panes. Or min pains, excuse me. Um, in the Dow 30 tactical, handful of auto framers, a couple 5DDs of interest, uh, McDonald's and Chevron. In the ETFs, uh, none of them test out on the auto framer. And uh, no big breakouts to the upside. So this is just cautiously optimistic here. Business as usual. Notice the, uh, but you can see the weakness in energy right here. And in uh, oil exploration, that was that sniper trade that's been suffering. But Mexico, that's why I'm liking that one to the upside. That's pretty strong medicine right there, Mexico. That's a form of relative strength assessment there. Auto framer for standard stats for framing and daily squeeze standard stats. I'll leave it to you for that. Uh, in the sniper screens, uh, we have one Godzilla in CNC again, a quiet Godzilla in the red, and then the VIX is a uh, we we started to see a little bit of volatility today because of a fed day but it resolved to the upside so i think this is um, uh, cautiously optimistic going forward standard stats for the s p the one day movers this is looking at the z score the one day z score the amount of volatility compared to its last 30 days uh, have plenty that were better than two to one. That's sort of a Fed relief response. Um, I like that Intel is starting to get some traction. Great American company, along with Applied Materials. 
Um, in our uh, tactical symbol set, as you know, I love things like Intel that are double green on volatility. Uh, and it really stands out based on that. That was a lot of people buying Intel today. So I think there's some room for that to gain tomorrow. Being dominated in MACD by the summer. So that's that's a positive sign as well, broadly speaking. Notice I'm putting together little pieces of the uh, of this market mosaic. My uh, my brother wants wants to take a look at uh, XHB real quick. I think that's if I remember that's Home Builders. XHB. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we'll start as we usually do three days or three months out, looking at the 150. So that's a pretty strong fireworks positioning now. What makes this really attractive is that it has cleared that previous 150-day high. And this is all just gravy and going. So there's a strong argument for that uh, as a sniper that you're able to play the fireworks. And the idea behind the fireworks pattern uh, is that you find something that closed nicely like that. And you say, this was such an exaggerated move. There's either a lot more coming and it's going to get another round of fireworks to the upside, or it shot its explosion, and now it's going to come back to here. So you're likely to get a strong move out of this compound critical state. So we put a tight minimum manageable risk box around that, and then we say, do we need to know which direction it's going to go out of a compound critical state? No. As long as it goes, we're ready to go. Uh, we're ready to follow price if it goes up, when we're ready to follow price if it goes down and we can set some clear targets and so if our risk box is like this you can see that we have a one two three almost four R back to here so XHB is in play as a sniper target uh, for more sniper patterns uh, you can my brother's completed the development of the sniper course what's really nice about that is it's fractal and he's got an intraday sniper Uh, which is what you see me using uh, on the sniper trade of the day. But he's also developed a three-day, nine-day sniper, which is really designed for money managers and a much longer-term swing approach, but uses the same principles. And it finds the same patterns and compound critical states, but it's using the much longer-term uh, charts to, to find these uh, compound critical states well suited for longer term trading so um, I'm excited to see him continue to develop that all right that's everything we got for today um, again I want to remind you that creativity 101 course is your gift for all your support and thank you very much and uh, invite you to think about the um, creativity 202 course there's an opportunity to start that in February um, on my home page at, um, at Tortoise Capital, .net, uh, you can see the three testimonies uh, from Kyun, uh, Chun Long, and uh, Tom Hardison. And you can see what those guys think about uh, having taken that course and having done the work. Um, pretty powerful. Um, best stuff I've ever done, I think. So that's everything I got for you, and uh, we will see you on the high ground. And Eddie, I owe you those. I owe you those doggone uh, reference links. I'm, I'm, I, I promise I'm on it. Okay, <laughs> okay, Sensei, I got you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I'm here. So, yeah, so getting my brain back into gear here. So, uh, yeah, I'll be looking forward.